Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Daniel and today we're diving deep into some major changes to old age security that the Canada Revenue Agency has just announced for 2024. These updates could significantly impact many Canadian seniors, so we're going to cover every aspect in detail. Grab a cup of coffee and settle in, because this is going to be a comprehensive breakdown you won't want to miss. Before we jump into the new changes, let's start with a thorough overview of old age security and its importance in Canada's retirement landscape. This context will help us better understand the significance of the upcoming changes. Old age security, commonly known as OAS, is one of the cornerstones of Canada's retirement income system. Established in 1952, it has been a crucial support for Canadian seniors for over seven decades. Unlike the Canada Pension Plan CPP, OS is funded through general tax revenues and is not tied to your employment history. To be eligible for OAs, you must be 65 years or older and a Canadian citizen or legal resident. You also need to have resided in Canada for at least 10 years since turning 18. For full benefits, you need to have lived in Canada for at least 40 years after age 18. If you've lived in Canada for less than 40 years after turning 18, you may still be eligible for a partial pension. The amount is prorated based on your years of residency. In many cases, Service Canada will automatically enroll you for OS when you turn 65. However, in some situations you may need to apply. It's always a good idea to check your status as you approach 65. OS payments are made monthly and are subject to annual adjustments based on the Consumer Price Index CPI to keep pace with inflation. It's important to note that OS benefits are considered taxable income. This means they're added to your total income when you file your taxes each year. Additionally, there's a mechanism called the OAS clawback, officially known as the OAS recovery tax. This is where high-income seniors may have to repay part or all of their OAS. We'll discuss this in more detail later, as it's one of the areas seeing changes in 2024. While not technically part of OAS, the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs is an additional benefit available to low-income OAS recipients. It's important to be aware of this as it forms part of the overall support system for seniors. Lastly, Canada has social security agreements with many countries. These can help you qualify for OAS even if you haven't lived in Canada long enough to meet the standard residency requirements. Now that we have a solid foundation on what OS is and how it works, let's dive into the big news the changes that the CARA has announced for 2024. The Canada Revenue Agency has announced three significant changes to the Old Age Security Program for 2024. These changes are designed to provide more financial support to Canadian seniors and offer greater flexibility in retirement planning. The three key changes are an increase in the maximum monthly payment, changes to the income threshold for the OAS clawback, and new options for deferring OAS. Each of these changes has the potential to significantly impact Canadian seniors, so we'll be exploring them in depth. Let's start with the increase in the maximum monthly payment. Starting January 2024, the maximum monthly OAS payment will see a substantial increase. The new maximum payment will be dollar amount per month, which translates to dollar annual amount per year. This represents an increase of 30% from the previous year. To put this into perspective, let's look at a historical comparison. As you can see, this increase is significant compared to previous years. But what does this mean for Canadian seniors in real terms? Let's consider a few scenarios. But for a senior eligible for the full OAS pension, this increase means an additional $2,600 per year. This extra money could cover several months of grocery bills for an average senior household or help with other essential expenses. For those eligible for partial OAAs, the increase will be proportional to their eligibility percentage. For example, someone eligible for 75% of the full OAAs would see their annual benefit increase by $2,600. It's important to note that this increase is not just a one-time boost, OAS payments are indexed to inflation, which means that this higher base amount will continue to grow over time to keep pace with the cost of living. While this increase is certainly good news for many seniors, it's crucial to understand that it may have implications for your overall financial picture. For some, it could push their income into a higher tax bracket or affect their eligibility for other income-tested benefits. We'll discuss these potential impacts later in the video. Now let's move on to the second major change adjustments to the OAS clawback threshold. The OAS clawback, officially known as the OAS recovery tax, has long been a point of contention for many Canadian seniors. For those unfamiliar with the concept, let's start with a quick explanation. 
The OAS clawback is a mechanism where high-income seniors may have to repay part or all of their OAS benefits. It's based on your net world income, which includes not just your employment income, but also pensions, investments, and other sources of income. For every dollar of income above this threshold, 15 cents of OAS benefits are clawed back. If a senior's income is high enough, their entire OAS benefit can be clawed back. Now, here's the big news starting in 2024. The income threshold at which the OAS clawback begins will be raised to dollar new amount for the 2024 tax year. This change means that seniors can earn more income before their OAA's benefits start to be reduced. Specifically, they can earn an additional dollar difference per year before the clawback kicks in. With this higher threshold, more seniors will be able to keep their full OAS benefits even if they have other sources of retirement income. For seniors with incomes above the new threshold, the amount of OAS clawed back will be less than under the current system. Now, let's look at a senior with an income of dollar amount above new threshold. This senior would still be subject to some clawback, but it would be reduced. It's important to note that while this change will benefit many seniors, it doesn't eliminate the clawback entirely. High-income seniors will still see their OAS benefits reduced or eliminated if their income is high enough. This change to the clawback threshold is a significant development that could have a substantial impact on the retirement planning strategies of many Canadians. It may influence decisions about when to start drawing on various retirement income sources, how to structure investments, and even when to retire. However, it's crucial to remember that everyone's financial situation is unique. While these changes are generally positive, they may affect individuals differently based on their specific circumstances. Now, let's move on to the third major change announced by the CRAI new options for deferring OAS. The concept of deferring OAS isn't new, but the CRAI is introducing some exciting changes that offer greater flexibility in how seniors can use this strategy. Before we dive into the changes, let's review what OAS deferral means and how it currently works. Under the current system, you can choose to delay receiving your OAS pension for up to 60 months 5 years after the date you become eligible. For each month you delay, your pension amount increases by 0.6%. This means if you defer for the full 5 years, your pension would be 36% higher than if you had started receiving it at 65. This can be a powerful strategy for some seniors, particularly those who are still working and don't immediately need the income, want to reduce their tax burden in their 60s, or are looking to maximize their retirement income in their later years. However, the current system has some limitations. Primarily, you can only defer in full year increments, which lacks flexibility for those who might want to start their pension partway through a year. Now, let's look at the changes coming in 2024. Starting next year, the CARA is introducing more flexibility in how seniors can defer their OAAs. Here are the key changes. First, instead of only being able to defer in full-year increments, individuals will be able to defer their OAS in monthly increments. This means you can start your OAS at any month between your 65th and 70th birthdays. Second, in addition to deferring the full OAS amount, seniors will now have the option to defer only a portion of their OAS pension. This allows for a more nuanced approach to retirement income planning. Third, the new system will allow for multiple deferral periods. This means you could start receiving OAs, then choose to defer again if your circumstances change. Let's look at some examples to illustrate how these new options might be used. Consider John who is 65 and plans to reduce his work hours over the next two years before fully retiring. Under the new system, he could defer 50% of his OAs for the first year, defer 25% for the second year, and then start receiving his full OAs with increases for the deferred portions at 67. Or take Sarah, who turns 65 in January, but doesn't need her full OAS income until later in the year. She could defer her full OAs from January to June, start receiving 50% of her OAS from July to December, and then begin receiving her full OAS with increases for the deferred portions the following January. These new options provide significantly more flexibility in retirement income planning. They allow seniors to better match their OAS income to their specific needs and circumstances, which can change over time. However, it's important to note that deciding whether and how to defer OAS is a complex decision that depends on many factors, including your overall financial situation, your health and life expectancy, your other sources of income, your tax situation, and your retirement lifestyle goals. Given the complexity of these decisions, it's highly recommended to consult with a financial advisor who can help you understand how these new options fit into your overall retirement plan. 
now that we've covered the three major changes to OAs for 2024, let's take a step back and consider the broader implications of these changes. The changes we've discussed today are significant and will have far-reaching effects on retirement planning in Canada. Let's explore some of the broader implications. First and foremost, these changes should lead to improved financial security for seniors. The increase in the maximum OS payment, combined with the higher clawback threshold, means that many seniors will see more money in their pockets. This could lead to improved financial security and quality of life for many older Canadians. We're also likely to see changes to retirement planning strategies. The new deferral options and increased clawback threshold may lead to shifts in how people approach retirement planning. For example, more people might choose to work longer and defer OAs to maximize their benefits. There may be changes in how people draw from various retirement income sources to optimize their tax situation. The partial deferral option could lead to more gradual transitions into retirement. It's important to remember that changes in OAA's income can affect eligibility for other income-tested benefits, such as the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs or various provincial programs. Some seniors may need to reassess their overall benefit strategy from a broader economic perspective. With more income in the hands of seniors, we could see increased spending power among this demographic. This could have positive effects on local economies, particularly in areas with large retiree populations. While these changes are beneficial for seniors, they also represent increased costs for the OAS program. As Canada's population continues to age, there may be ongoing debates about the sustainability of the program and potential future adjustments. Another important consideration is the increased complexity in decision-making. While the new options provide more flexibility, they also introduce more complexity into retirement planning. This may lead to an increased need for professional financial advice among seniors and those approaching retirement. Lastly, these significant changes to OAAs could open the door for discussions about reforms to other aspects of Canada's retirement income system, such as the Canada Pension Plan CPPP or Tax Treatment of Retirement Savings. As we can see, these changes to OAs are not just about a few numbers changing. They represent a significant shift in Canada's approach to supporting its senior population and could have wide-ranging effects on how Canadians plan for and experience retirement. Now let's address some frequently asked questions about these changes. Since the announcement of these changes, we've received many questions from our viewers. Let's address some of the most common ones. One frequent question is whether seniors need to apply for the increased OS payment. The answer is no, if you're already receiving OAS, the increase will be applied automatically. You don't need to take any action. Many people have asked if these changes will affect the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs. The GIs is a separate program and its eligibility criteria haven't changed. However, the increase in OAS payments could affect the GIs amounts for some low-income seniors. If you're currently receiving GIs, it's a good idea to review your situation with Service Canada. For those turning 65 in 2024, a common question is whether they should defer their OAs. The decision to defer OAS depends on your individual circumstances, including your health, other income sources, and financial goals. It's best to consult with a financial advisor who can help you make this decision based on your specific situation. Some viewers have asked if the OAS clawback threshold will continue to increase in future years. The OAS clawback threshold is typically adjusted annually based on inflation. The significant increase for 2024 is an extraordinary measure, but we expect regular inflation adjustments to continue in future years. Many are concerned about how these changes will affect their taxes. It's important to remember that OAS payments are considered taxable income. The increased payments could push some seniors into a higher tax bracket. However, the higher clawback threshold means fewer seniors will face the OS recovery tax. It's important to consider your overall tax situation when planning your retirement income. Lastly, some have asked if they can change their mind about deferring OS once they've started. Under the new system, you'll have more flexibility to start, stop, and restart your OS payments. However, once you've started receiving payments, you can't go back and defer for past periods. As we wrap up this comprehensive look at the 2024 OAS changes, it's clear that these updates represent a significant shift in Canada's retirement landscape. The increased payments, higher clawback threshold, and new deferral options offer both opportunities and challenges for Canadian seniors and those approaching retirement age. While these changes are generally positive, providing more financial support and flexibility, they also introduce new complexities into retirement planning. It's more important than ever to stay informed about your retirement benefits 
and to seek professional advice when needed. Remember, retirement planning is not a one-size-fits-all endeavor. These OAS changes will affect everyone differently based on their unique financial situation, health status, and retirement goals. Take the time to understand how these changes impact you personally and consider consulting with a financial advisor to optimize your retirement strategy. As always, we'll be here to keep you updated on any further developments in Canada's retirement income system. Thank you for joining us for this in-depth look at the 2024 OAS changes. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more timely updates on Canadian financial news. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay informed about future announcements that could affect your finances. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.